It's that time again for another segment of Rule Review. Get ready to talk about uniforms. Hello and welcome back to another great Rule Review segment. My name is Josh, and I just want to say how humbled we all are here at the Officials Institute with all the donations that keep coming in week after week. And more specifically, I want to recognize the following viewers for their donations this month. Thank you very much. If you wish to make a donation as well, please find and click the link above. Rule 3, Section 4 and 5 is rarely referenced when officials prepare for an upcoming game or season, but if you are ever faced with an unusual situation regarding uniforms or team equipment and apparel, understanding this less familiar section can go a long way in handling it correctly. So let's get to it and talk about uniforms and equipment. Roll those clips. In our first clip, we start with a regular free throw, but instead of watching the action of this play, let's focus on the uniforms and equipment. The first thing to notice is the color of the number. Starting in the 24-25 season, the number needs to be a solid color that contrasts from the color of the jersey, just like you see on the visitors' uniforms here. Even though this rule is not in effect for another three seasons, it is important to start recognizing these illegal uniforms now, so when we do finally get to the 24-25 season, we are not caught off guard and know how to handle it if it does happen. The penalty for an illegal uniform is one technical foul, and only one, even if there are multiple uniforms that are illegal. And if you don't notice that the uniform is illegal until after the game starts, that's okay. Whenever it is discovered, any time during the game, is when it is penalized. The other thing to notice in this clip is the color of this player's leg sleeve. It is red, and even though I'm sure it's one of the school colors, it's illegal. Why? Because Rule 3.5.3 .3 tells us that arm, knee, and leg sleeves, compression shorts, and tights can only be a certain color. Black, white, beige, or the predominant color of the jersey. Since this team is wearing white jerseys, a red-colored sleeve is illegal. The penalty for wearing an illegal piece of equipment is nothing. The player simply cannot participate until the color restriction is corrected. Our next video has another free throw which allows us to once again observe multiple players at the same time and analyze what they are wearing. Let's start with the visiting team. These numbers are not a solid contrasting color, which, as we already know, is not currently illegal, but will be in the 24-25 season. So no penalty yet, but making a mental note for the future. Now, let's look at the actual color of the jerseys. By rule, the visiting team should be wearing a dark contrasting color from the white home team jerseys. These uniforms are indeed a darker color than white, but by no means are they even close to being contrasting, and therefore should be considered illegal and penalized, again with only one technical foul for all of them. The last apparel item worn by the visiting team worth mentioning is the undershirts. Undershirts need to be a single solid color, similar to the torso of the jersey. Since black and light gray are not similar, these two players shall be directed to leave the game and may not return until it is remedied. Now, taking a closer look at the equipment and apparel worn by the home team, we see some black arm sleeves, a white leg sleeve, and a white headband. We already know the rules allow for these colors, regardless of the color of the jersey. 
However, the rules also state that whatever legal color a player decides to wear shall be the same color worn by teammates. So before play can resume, either the players wearing the white apparel or the player wearing black must leave the game and if they wish to return, must comply with the selected team color. In the next clip we see, once again, we'll ignore the action of the play and key in on the equipment and apparel of the players. At first glance, everything appears to be okay. There is only one leg sleeve and it's appropriately colored black. Undershirts match the color of the jersey. So what's the deal with this video? Well, if we key in on 32 black, we can see something, presumably a headband, around the neck of the player wearing it. Not only does the wearing of this headband violate the rule, stating a headband shall be worn on the forehead or crown, but it could pose a possible injury to the player or his opponent if at any point a finger gets caught in it. If this is discovered during live play, officials should wait for a dead ball to address the player, instructing him to wear the headband properly or simply take it off entirely. And again, because this is considered equipment and apparel, no penalty is assessed. In the last clip, we watch a free throw scenario get interrupted because the official notices what could be blood on the uniform of the free throw shooter. After verifying it is indeed blood, he instructs the player to leave the game as time ticks by with everyone waiting, the trainer tries to appropriately clean the uniform. With no timeout reported, and when almost a minute of time is consumed, the player returns to the line to continue play at the point it was interrupted. But is this the proper procedure? Under NFHS rules, if a player has any amount of blood on his or her uniform, they shall be directed to leave the game. So far, so good. But just because it is the free throw shooter does not allow that team any amount of time needed to appropriately clean the uniform. When the player is directed to leave the game, the coach needs to make a choice. Either put in a substitute shooter to replace the player with blood, or call a timeout. However, the blood situation does need to be corrected by the end of the timeout for the player to be allowed to return to competition. If after the time has expired, the blood is still not appropriately cleaned, the player shall remain out of the game with the substitute shooter replacing him. Okay, that's it. Our topic on uniforms and equipment all dressed up and ready for action. I know there are many other ways we could have colored the rule, but hopefully the examples we presented will assist you in handling some of the more commonly seen uniform issues in your games. Until we see you again, have a good game. Hey, you made it to the end of this video, which means it's time to hit those like, subscribe, and share buttons. Also, please consider making a donation and help keep this channel running with the best basketball rules video training anywhere. I'll see you in the next one.